developing a pilot OER certificate program for faculty, and we'll share some of our lessons from UT San Antonio. Let me actually move down here. Um, so we can talk a little bit about <laughs> what we each do in our roles at, at UTSA. Um, and it's so great to have a uh, cross-department collaboration with uh, Rachel and Academic Innovation on this project. But my role at UTSA, I am the OER coordinator um, in the library. I'm also the political science librarian too. Um, and I coordinate our Adopt a Free Textbook grant program and I help faculty along with our team of subject librarians to find OER if they're looking for OER to adopt for their classes or if they're interested in creating OER on our Pressbooks network. Um, and Rachel and I actually work as a team to help our faculty um, with, with those projects. And then I'll, I'll let Rachel talk a little bit about what she does. Hello, everyone. So I am a teaching and learning consultant with Academic Innovation, and I focus specifically on digital tools, um, which means that a lot of my work is partnering with faculty one on one to talk about digital tools they might either be using or want to use in their course or problems that they're having that could be solved by digital tools, um, but also leading initiatives and developing courses and resources for faculty who are using digital courses like Pressbooks, which is why I get to work with Deanne on this project. Um, just a quick notes about our institution, just to give you an idea, just a quick snapshot. We have almost 35,000 total students at UTSA, a very high percentage that are first generation, almost half. Um, prime population for OER um, and uh, OER co-creation with students. Um, around 145,000 UTSA alumni around the world, and we are a tier one research university. We primarily have undergraduates, um, and then you can also see the percentage that are first generation um, or not first generation over to the top right. And then just distribution by college, enrollment by college. Um, our HCAP college has the highest enrollment, it looks like. Um, and then uh, uh, race ethnicity of our students as well. But we have almost 1,400 faculty uh, distribution um, of faculty by college at the top, and then the ethnicity um, of our faculty, and then very interesting, um, probably what you're most interested in is kind of seeing our faculty by rank, and then um, faculty by tenure status. You can see we have a very high percentage of other faculty, and these are uh, primarily our FTT faculty, which are also the pri primarily the faculty that teach the courses, not all of the courses that um, work with OER, but a large number because they are those high enrollment survey courses where OER is just a really nice natural fit. Um, so just to talk a little bit about um, UTSA and, and OER, we are very fortunate um, to work at an institution that has really prioritized OER and in some ways uh, formally prioritized it. So um, you can see a link up at the top. The very first one is to our UTSA strategic plan, which doesn't explicitly name OER, but um, one of the goals is for UTSA to be a model for student success. And you can see, um, actually have the language from the UTSA strategic plan here. So you can see that our goals, um, this is very tightly and neatly aligned with the goals of uh, advancing OER UTSA um, very much. Um, and I'm sorry, I, I jumped ahead a little bit. These, this is actually the library strategic plan. This is our destination and our goals here. Um, we do name specifically OER. If you want to see the UTSA strategic plan, um, you can jump out and take a look at that. Um, but uh, we're just very fortunate to have support leadership. Our provost is um, very supportive of advancing OER and many of our um, campus partners, including our, of course, academic innovation and student government association, um, our bookstore and our registrar are also great supporters and partners for advancing OER. So we'll jump um, down a bit. Um, not to spend too much time on this slide, but just um, I think the thing that always speaks to me um, about uh, this language um, is uh, this is from the UTSC strategic plan um, is that 
Um, we foster academic excellence through community of dialogue, discovery, and innovation that embraces the uniqueness of each voice, which to me very highly resonates with OER, especially OER creation and bringing our student and faculty voices to the fore with, with OER as a way to do that. Um, so just a quick timeline of um, OER um, progress here at UTSA. Um, we joined as an institutional partner with OpenStax in 2015. That was really an amazing way to kind of get going with our OER um, before we started our, our grant program at the library uh, that supports OER adoption. In 2016, we launched that grant program, awarded five grants, and then from uh, 2017 to 2021, we have awarded 30 grants annually. Uh, now you'll notice um, uh, I don't have 2022 in there. That's because at the very last uh, list, the last item in the bullet there is mentioning our design grants, which we awarded four of those this year. Um, but uh, a total of 13 grants were awarded uh, through our grant program this year, four of those were for design. Um, we started looking at OER authoring with getting access to press books, um, which is that this is when um, there was a need. Um, one of our academic innovation um, leaders who was also teaching uh, a class wanted to leverage press books in her course in fall. So that's when we started exploring and we agreed to get access to press books. And then so um, we got our SSO integration in spring of 2021. And then um, in fall of 2022, we actually received two uh, coordinating board grants from the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board for our faculty that were looking to adopt OER or remix OER in their classes. Um, so this is kind of just a big picture. Um, this lists out some of the services that we provide around um, OER adoption and authoring uh, through the UTSA libraries. This isn't everything um, that we do. This is kind of intended to be like a, a higher level uh, capturing of what we do offer, but pretty much anything around copyright, creative commons licensing, identifying existing OER, and then helping with um, compati license compatibility among Creative Commons licenses if faculty are actually remixing in press books, all of those things. Um, and then, uh, let's see, yeah. And then just guiding on sharing. If an OER is created by one of our faculty, how do they best share that for ultimate impact and getting it out into the world? And then I'll hand it over to Rachel on this next slide so she can talk a little bit about her team. Yeah, so on the slide, you are looking at some of the things that academic innovation does while we're supporting UTSA faculty and students. Um, a lot of times if we are working directly with a faculty member, it started with a course designer development question. Um, we have instructional designers that partner with faculty to help really revamp the design of their courses and make them as effective as possible. And a lot of times during those conversations, <clears throat> textbook issues or, you know, Know, I wish it was a little bit different. I wish I could do X, Y, and Z. I wish this cost wasn't such a burden for my students come up during those conversations, at which point we're able to kind of point them in the direction of OER and the various resources that the library has that Deanne shared. Um, also, a major thing I want to call out that our department focuses on is um, accessibility and universal design for learning. That's a major thing that we encourage our faculty to keep in the forefront of their minds and talk about what that's what accessibility means in its broadest sense, right? Um, I think OER really has accessibility in its heart. And so that's something that really merges well together with our mission and the work that we do every day. Yeah, and I'll just will echo that echo that, you know, their team, I, I reach out with any, you know, questions around accessibility. And we have um hopefully a plan someday to maybe have um, you know, a guide for our faculty where we we're just talking about this earlier in another meeting <laughs> where we might um implement something that is like an overall tool for, you know, adopting and remixing OER at UTSA or have something kind of like the OER starter kit. Um, and model after that. So um, just a little bit of information about our Adopt-A-Free Textbook grants. Um, these uh, have 
primarily been funded through the library's budget. We were very fortunate um, last year in spring of 2021 to get a commitment from a donor um, for donating um, 25,000 to the grant program last year, and then to continue that donation this year and into 2023. So um, we do, we have awarded 138 grants, um, primarily for OER adoption. Um, it's important to note with this number that some of these were faculty that adopted no cost resources where they were library eBooks, not necessarily CC licensed, but we were able to get multi-user access for an eBook, or maybe they wanted to use library articles for the class that were no additional cost for the students. So still a tremendous help for the students, not the platinum standard that OER is, but still a great help. So this is a mix of affordable and OER grants. Um, we've invested 207000 through our grant program, um, and we do have student savings. We just hit $10 million this year with our grant program savings. Um, and this button, um, if you're interested later, you can click it and explore our OER website where you can see our faculty textbook heroes and some of the work that they have done around integrating OER into their classes. So um, this particular slide is um, a little bit more specific to our uh, Rachel and I, our partnership uh, in working to create these uh, certificate programs, which um, we want to be very clear that we are launching these. They haven't been launched yet. Our plan is to launch them later on this fall, ideally in November, um, for uh, our grant recipients that were awarded this past spring. Um, and they would have a year to complete the course. Um, I'll talk about a little bit more about modality and, and Rachel will talk about the platforms we're thinking about using. But um, this slide really just talks about the evolution of the partnership. So uh, we discussed getting access to Pressbooks in fall of 2020, actually signed um, the license agreement with Pressbooks. We enabled the SSO in spring of 2021. And then we started meeting bi-weekly to really plan, okay, you know, we need to promote this great product. So let's let's have some webinars for faculty. So those were co-promoted um, in our faculty center newsletter and then also on the library's website. So we have Pressbooks Basics and Pressbooks Advanced webinars that we have been offering um, since uh, last fall of 2022. And we do those every semester. Um, we also have a Creative Commons uh, webinar that we also offer as, as a series, those, those three webinars as a series. Um, so yeah, our original idea was to have Blackboard to serve as a space where after faculty attended these webinars, then they could come and ask us questions. And, and that really didn't, you know, at the time that seemed like a good idea, but we were thinking, well, why don't we make those courses a part of the grant program in spring of 2022? So whenever we um, launched the grants and there was a redesign that was going to take place with the grants anywhere where we would have tiers to clearly um, lay out uh, OER, clear OER CC license adoption from no cost library, you know, adoption of materials. Let's just go ahead and add that as another deliverable of our grant recipient. So that's that's what we did. Um, and yeah, and then just to, just a note, I wanted to we wanted to note this too. We we work on so many different projects together, um, academic innovation. And Rachel and I, you know, our teams are involved in a lot of different projects uh, together. UTSA Libraries and Academic Innovation, um, but we've launched um, a Leganto tool, which some of you may, may have at your institutions. Um, we launched that in the spring and piloted in some classes. Um, actually, I'm sorry, that was the summer. We're, we're continuing to pilot into the fall. And this is just another way, too, that we're helping faculty provide those resources to their students that are no additional costs and library materials. So a lot of different projects and partnerships among our teams. So um, the grant tiers, this will link you out to the website where you can actually see our application and what the tiers look like, but I'm just gonna drop down to this next slide so I can show you what that looks like. Um, and the, the reason for this was to help, you know, to help our faculty understand, you know, the differences between different types of uh, different, differently licensed materials so that they more, uh, that they better understood those differences um, and really to, as you can kind of see, 
the CC license projects are um, a little bit, uh, have a little bit higher funding. We want to kind of push them in that direction. It's just better for our students who really appreciate that continued access of OER after a class ends. So this is, these are the new grant tiers and um, we have individual and group grants that faculty can choose to apply for. And so why? Um, I've kind of talked a little bit about this, but just very briefly, it just made sense that as our faculty are working on these projects, they're going to come to us and ask us questions. And we still, you know, absolutely want to have those one-on-ones with our faculty as, as, they, as they have questions about the projects and what, what they're working on. In fact, we have set up teams for each of our design projects this year, where Rachel's a part of that team on Microsoft Team. Microsoft Teams, the faculty member, I am on that team, and then we have our librarian who's the um, the liaison librarian for that faculty member for their department. But this is just a better way to support them. Like we're giving them the material that they need, the, the knowledge that they need to do the work. Um, and they get a certificate for completing uh, that uh, coursework. Um, so it's just a better prepare our faculty to for if they're applying for any external grants through the coordinating board, which need to be Creative Commons license content. And some of our faculty were really struggling with understanding the differences between that and library resources. So this is to help better prepare them. So um, just a quick note about designing the curriculum here um, and what our plan is. So we are pulling content from um, past webinars, from that that we have provided. So those Pressbooks Basics, Pressbooks Advanced webinars and the Creative Commons webinars, because all of these have content that neatly aligns with our outcomes for these courses. We also have another webinar that we offer why OER um, that talks about, you know, the benefits of OER for students and faculty. And it's a big key piece that we see sometimes our faculty are missing with in their understanding of OER as they're working on integrating it into their class. Then we're also integrating in faculty testimonials. So these are from promotional videos that we created at the library um, or uh, from webinars where we had our faculty speak about their work. So we're trying to pull in a variety of uh, different sources and voices, but really with those faculty videos, that's such a great um, way to really, you have a faculty member who is talking about their experience. Um, and it's just a great way to model, you know, success with OER. And then we're also pulling in videos from Open Education Network and other CC licensed videos that we are finding online through. One thing that I would add there, Deanne, yep. um, is what I love is the, the variety that we're reaching for because we're developing an asynchronous online course. So faculty will be completing these on their own time and Deanne, and I have supported her in this, has done a great job at reaching for variety in the content that faculty will be engaging with. And we're constantly brainstorming with each other about other ways we can bring in those diverse perspectives and more variety in the content. Um, so that's something to be thinking about if you're looking to do something similar at your institution. Yeah, it, I, I had started noticing, you know, the original plan was, let's let's repurpose that webinar content. And I was like, okay, that's boring. No one wants to watch me talk about, <laughs> you know, these these topics for an hour. So let's, let's mix it up. So, and Rachel's been an amazing help with brainstorming different ways that we can, you know, really in, uh, provide engaging content for these classes. And I'm just so grateful for that every time we meet, talk about these projects. So there are two certificate courses. Um, there's one for OER adoption for our faculty that are adopting existing OER. And then OER design, um, this aligns with our tiers they're creating or uh, doing extensive remixing of existing OER. Um, just to kind of give you an overview, these are our, we will, we will call this these like course goals or our, um, they're not really learning outcomes, but our goals for the class. Um, so, and these are very broadly stated, so they understand the textbook problem, how, understand how they can help. Um, they need to understand what OER is um, and then list those benefits for students and faculty. We want them to be able to know how to find OER. A lot of our faculty don't really know the places to look. And so um, giving them those, uh, you know, places like OER Commons or 
Pressbooks directory, we really push because they can clone books that they find on Pressbooks directory and then tailor those. So uh, copyright, um, Creative Commons questions are also a big key thing. And then understanding um, the legislation around OER reporting is also another goal. Um, and then also the inclusive access legislation. Um, just being aware that that exists because a lot of our faculty don't know about it. Um, OER design certificate. Um, you're going to see some overlap and this may change slightly. We, Like I mentioned, we are refining it, um, developing it this semester with the launch later on this semester. But the big thing you're going to see that jumps out here that's different um, is that there's more of an intentional focus on Creative Commons and copyright um, and then using press books, um, which is not something that adoption recipients get. Um, so some basic things in press books, advanced um, uh, features and tools. And then ultimately, um, we want to have a, a little bit of information on how to develop OER with, with students. We don't have a lot of faculty that are doing that right now, but that, um, you know, is where we want to get them to go, of course. So um, we're not going to have time to actually take a look at our curriculum, but this is actually in a Google Sheet. Um, you can explore the link and take a look at kind of what we're planning. And then just with the keep in mind that this is kind of changing as we're working on it very heavily right now um, and into October. And then um, the design certificate curriculum is also linked as well. So I will let Rachel talk about software and technology. Yeah, so as we are looking at this content and trying to meet our faculty needs and achieve those goals, there's a few different tools that we're kind of reaching for. One is Play Posit, um, which is a really amazing video software that allows you to create interactions within a video. Um, it helps take something that would be passive learning and turn it into a more active learning process, which is great because engagement and motivation are major factors that you want to think about when you're designing asynchronous courses. Another tool that we're using that I personally am a big fan of is Articulate 360's Rise. Um, it's a really great like course development software that is just aesthetically beautiful and easy to navigate on both the back end for the designer and on the forward facing end for you know, faculty or participants, whoever that might be. And then we are really trying to meet faculty where they're at. So we're taking all of this content and embedding it into Blackboard, which is UTSA's current learning management system. Um, we wanted to put this somewhere that they're already going, whether rather than asking them to go somewhere else. So this is, this is our trifecta of tools that we're using to pull everything together and help faculty kind of answer those questions and get that foundational knowledge. Yeah. We are running really tight on time. We've got about 25 seconds here. Um, so I, I think, you know, um, we want to, of course, assess. These are some of the questions that we want to look at in our assessment. Mainly, we want to make sure the content's useful for the faculty, right? That's one of the most important things. And is it the right link? Um, I they have too much time to complete it. Um, not enough. I kind of feel like maybe they might have took too much time with the year since these are not really very long classes, but um, these are some things that we're hoping to incorporate into our assessment. Um, and let's see, move down. Um, I'm, I'm gonna just touch on this really quickly that we we had a project that we, we may loop back to later that was kind of the initial impetus for us getting access to press books. Um, and this was reflections of our, our freshmen that were attending UTSA during the pandemic. Um, it was something that we didn't really ever get to totally complete. We have the artifacts from the students, but we would like to some point, the plan was to get that into press books. So maybe in five years, we can explore that and loop back to that project. So um, some key takeaways, uh, get to know your campus partners, find out, you know, what they're doing, um, how can they support your OER goals, you know, on campus, how can they uh, support OER authoring, um, what does that look like, um, you know, meet with them, um, talk regularly, and brainstorm, and like, as Rachel said, you know, we have just really great ideas that come up in every meeting that we have, and so I'm just so grateful for her every day as we're working on these certificate courses. And then, um, yeah, so as you have questions, please reach out to us. We really appreciate you attending 
our video session today and are very open to any questions that you have. Thank you guys for coming. I'm excited to hear what thoughts and questions you all have.